My name is Simon Ringsmith. I'm a teaching and learning librarian from Oklahoma State University. And in this presentation, I'm going to talk all about something called H5P. Maybe you've heard of this acronym before. Maybe you haven't. Either way is fine. We're going to talk about H5P, what it is, and how to use it to create engaging and dynamic content for open educational resources. To start, I'm going to go way back to the early days of the internet and talk about where H5P came from. And I'm going to talk about H5P and how it fits into the OER landscape right now. And then I'm going to show you briefly how to integrate H5P into Pressbooks, the online publishing platform for a lot of open educational resources. So a little bit of background for H5P. And we're going to go way back, almost 30 years back to 1993. There was a company called Future Wave Software, and they made a program called Smart Sketch. And Smart Sketch was for tablets back 30 years ago. Yes, they did have tablets, and yes, they were not very good, but everything's got to start somewhere, right? In 1995, Smart Sketch made a program called, or Smart Sketch transitioned into a program called Future Splash. And Future Splash was used for animations on the early internet. In fact, it, way back in 1996, Microsoft was using Future Splash animations on MSN.com, their main homepage. These animations, though, didn't just run on a browser, they needed a plugin. And this was called the Flash plugin. Maybe you remember the Flash plugin. The Flash plugin actually it came, uh, the name of Flash comes from Future Splash. Macromedia was a company that bought Future Splash and they renamed Future Splash Flash. And you can still see the remnants of Future Splash in that name, Flash. The F in Future and the L A S H in Splash. And there you have Flash. In 2002, there was the uh, Flash Player 6 that was released, and that supported full video. So you could finally do actual video online way back in 2002. But again, you needed this Flash plugin. And they kept on releasing new versions of the Flash Player that required new updates to the plugin. It was a strange time on the internet. And in 2005, YouTube launched. This is before they even got bought by Google. They were just a, 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 an early player in the online video market, and they required Flash. It seems strange today that you would need to download a plugin just to watch a YouTube video, but that's what we had back in, in 2005. You needed a plugin just to watch something on YouTube. In 2007, the iPhone launched, and that changed everything because... Steve Jobs did not want this on the iPhone. He didn't want, uh, Steve Jobs was the CEO of Apple, in case you're not familiar. Steve Jobs didn't want iPhone users to have to install a plugin. In fact, the iPhone today is notoriously locked down. You still can't really install a lot of plugins. And Steve Jobs wrote a, uh, an open letter. He called it Thoughts on Flash. And if you just Google it, Steve Jobs Thoughts on Flash, you can still read it today. He wanted an open web. And in his thoughts on Flash, he said, we strongly believe that all standards pertaining to the web should be open. Rather than use Flash, which is a proprietary technology by Adobe then, who bought Micromedia, Apple has adopted HTML5. And this is back in 2007. They were already talking about HTML5. And CSS and JavaScript, all of these open standards, which the internet today still relies on. So the reason that we no longer need plugins for our software that we use on the internet, well, many reasons, but one of the big reasons was the launch of the iPhone and mobile phones in general, and companies didn't want people to have to install plugins just to do watch video and do interactive things on the web on their phones. So H5P and OER, how does H5P fit into the OER landscape of today? Well. The web today is interactive and open, and it's built on something called HTML, which is hypertext markup language. It's the building blocks of the internet way back, if we go back to 1993 from before, or even earlier than that, HTML allows websites to have the formatting that we see. Uh, it could be as simple as making text bold-faced and italic and changing the color of things to building highly complicated websites that we see right now. It all starts with HTML. HTML5 is the fifth version of HTML that was adopted by the World Wide Web Consortium. It's a, a body that sets standards for how websites should function and operate. HTML is open, flexible, and HTML5 is multimedia focused, and it's supported by all browsers. Any browser that you get today, whether it's on a mobile phone or desktop or laptop, will support HTML5. So H5P, that brings us to those uh, that odd acronym with two letters and number, HTML5 package is what that stands for, H5P, HTML5 package. 
and it's a, a collection of, uh, of, of code that does not require a plugin. It basically eliminates the need for anyone to download a plugin like we had with the Flash Player plugin in order to do interactive elements. It's open, it's flexible, and H5P is multimedia focused, and this all makes it ideal for open educational resources because it combines the open web with open pedagogy. We can create the type of interactive educational elements that make OER so compelling for so many people and we can use some of the, the foundations of open pedagogy for free through H5P. Anyone can use, edit, and create H5P. We can embed H5P without plugins or commercial software, and it's supported by major learning management systems like Canvas, Brightspace, Blackboard, and Moodle. It's also supported by content management systems like WordPress or Drupal, and there's no coding skills required. So how do you get started with H5P? It's too good to be true, right? Well, it actually isn't. It is great and it is true. You can go to h5p.org and create a free account if you just want to play around with some of the tools that are available on that website on h5p.org. You'll also see an option about uh, pricing. If you want to host H5P but you don't really have a, a, a way to do it, if you're just building your own website and writing your own code from scratch, you need a server that can run the background code. It's not proprietary, it's all PHP code and fairly standard website stuff, but you need a, a server to be able to run the code that runs in the background to make, make H5P work. You can run that on the, the h5p.org or you can use Pressbooks or another platform that is able to do that. So if you just wanna play around with H5P, go to h5p.org, create a free account, and then you can click on the examples and downloads or you can go to this web address here, h5p.org slash content hyphen types and applications. And you can see all of the uh, tools that are available to you, the H5P tools that are available to you. So how about Pressbooks? How do you get H5P into Pressbooks? Well, it's pretty simple, but there are some steps that you need to know about. First of all, your Pressbooks administrator needs to enable H5P. If you are working in a Pressbook uh, in, in a textbook or, or other OER resource in Pressbooks and you don't see any option to add H5P, then contact your Pressbooks administrator and make sure H5P is enabled. And then from within a single Pressbooks book, you'll need to go down to the bottom left of the admin dashboard and go to the H5P content option. From there, you'll see a couple different menu items show up. When you click H5P content, you'll see all H5P content, add new libraries and my results. Right now, all you need to do is just click add new. We can't do the rest of these until we add H5P to Pressbooks or to a book in Pressbooks. After that, you'll see this option here. It, it will load in the middle of your uh, Pressbooks admin dashboard. It will load this scrolling interface where you can look through all of these different H5P options, which are incidentally the same ones that are available if you just go to h5p.org and go to the ones that you can, the examples and downloads option from that main h5p.org website. This is the exact same ones here. You can look through all of these, you can click on one of them and uh, play with it a little bit and can see a demo of it. And when you're ready to install one of these on in, into your Pressbooks, click the name of it and then click the install button and it will get the code that's required and install it for you. And from there, you can then configure it. And this is the configuration option for one of these H5P tools. Every, every one of these tools has a little bit different configuration interface, so I can't show you all of them, but you'll see some options to configure and it'll ask you to write text or, or upload a picture or something that you'll need to do so that you can actually create this H5P element and then it's time to add it to your Pressbook. From the admin interface of a chapter or the front or back matter, you'll find the add H5P option here. And again, this also, this won't happen until H5P is enabled by the administrator and you've actually created an H5P tool. And then it will load, after you click H5P, it will load this option here where you can look at all the H5P tools that you have downloaded and configured, and then you can insert them. And it will actually insert just a little snippet of code into your H5P backend admin interface, and that code will then tell it to run the H5P tool. It seems like a lot, but it's actually pretty simple. And hopefully this helps you understand a little bit more about H5P, what it is, where it came from, and why it's so important for OER today.